Well, good morning, church. How are you guys doing this fine evening? <laughs> so, man, I am excited to be here tonight. Uh, I'm excited that I get to uh, uh, share a little bit of the word, but I'm also really excited that I don't get to do this by myself tonight. Um, a little bit later in this message, I'm going to be bringing up uh, Taylor Schwab, and he's going to be kind of giving a little bit of a word. And But right now, I have this amazing young lady, Katie McGee. Can you guys give her a round of applause? <laughs> I absolutely love this girl. Uh, for like the last year, she has been the number one person I've gone to when it comes to young adult ministry. Because uh, I realized real quick, I'm not a young adult anymore. I just hit 33. And as much as I would like to think I am, I'm not. Uh, especially when you wake up and the pain starts getting in. And you're like, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> I just woke up. Um, and so Katie has been helping me uh, just navigate young adult ministry in this last year. And uh, I just, I love her. And uh, I actually asked her today, if uh, before we start tonight, that it, that she would share a little bit of a testimony uh, of just uh, something that in her life. And I'm gonna just gonna be able, I'm gonna ask her a couple questions and she's just gonna share. So Katie. <laughs> I know we didn't fully practice this, but it's going to be all good, okay? All right. Uh, Katie, can you tell me someone in your life who lived with such integrity and was just so amazing that you're like, man, I want that. I want, I, like, they, they lived with such integrity. Jesus, you saw it in their life, and you're just like, I want that. Yeah, that would definitely have to be uh, my grandpa, um, as my family calls him, Poopa. It would definitely have to be him and how he lived his everyday life. Yeah. Can you share an example? Um, my grandpa was always a man of his word. And uh, one time, uh, that side of my family was trying to buy a van. And my grandpa found this van for the price. And he told the guy that he was going to buy it and that he would come back with the cash for him. And that when my uncle found another van, the same one, for a little bit cheaper, that when they said, no, 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 we're going to go buy this one because it's cheaper. But my grandpa said, no, I gave that man my word and we're going to buy that one. And so my whole life, like that's always been just such a big thing to me, like keeping my word to people and people keeping their word to me. Yeah. So the example that your grandpa set for you of keeping word, living with integrity has affected you today so much that you're living for the Lord. You're living with G for Jesus and that and it's blessed you guys because Katie tonight was leading us in worship and that just kind of came down from generation to generation that she was able to bless us because she saw Jesus living in her grandpa. She saw that example and she's like, I want that. I want that for my life. Amen. 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 If you guys don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bummed about this. Katie is moving to Hawaii and she's on my young adult leadership team and I'm really sad, but I love her so much. And I'm just going to pray for her because I believe in so much for this girl and just what God's going to do in her life. Lord, I thank you for Katie McGee, Lord. I thank you that she has been just a huge blessing to me, to this church, Lord. And we know that she's going to continue to be a blessing uh, as you've called her to Hawaii, which we all one day hope you call us to, uh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you, and uh, we just, uh, Lord, we just pray many blessings over Katie, Lord, in your name. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, it's funny. When she told me her grandpa, I was like, is this the chocolate chip grandpa we're talking about? And she said, no, another grandpa. But she said the chocolate chip grandpa was going to be here today. And I just want to say, hi, chocolate chip grandpa. I love your cookies. Next time you make them, remember me. Uh I'll send you my address later. Um, you guys can already open up your Bibles to Daniel 6. Tonight we're going to be talking in Daniel. And uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I am the young adult pastor here at the bridge. And uh, I get to bless and get to hang out with so many of our young adults. Um, and the cool thing about that is uh, we get to try things a little bit different. We get to do things a little bit new. Uh, just maybe you wouldn't see traditionally on a Sunday morning. Um, and we get to kind of test the waters. And I thought, how cool would it be if we did that today? That we would kind of maybe test the waters a little bit, do something a little bit different and fresh that you wouldn't just hear from me, but that you would hear from somebody else. And part of the young adult ministry is that uh, as I, I'm leading, God has given me awesome people to, that I get to lead with. And one of those awesome dudes is Taylor Schwab, who I'm going to invite up. And he's going to be sharing a little bit about Daniel and Daniel 6. Um, go ahead and give him a round of applause. If you guys know Taylor, you know 
that he is uh, the tech guy here. And, uh, you know, I, he's one of my best friends. And I'm, I'm so excited. As I was kind of sharing tonight, people just don't get to see you turn the lights on. But you get to share the gospel a little bit tonight. And hopefully you can turn a light on in their hearts. Uh, and so... Uh, we're going to be talking about that. Uh, he's going to be just sharing in Daniel 6. And I just want to give a little bit of some history. Uh, man, when we were, when you look at the life of Daniel, it is amazing all that he went through. And yet he just stayed strong to the Lord. Man, this is a guy whose country was taken from him. Uh, he was pretty much, when we talk about persecution, man, he was living it out every single day. He saw kingdoms rise and fall, and he had, he had to report to different leaders, and yet he stayed strong to God throughout that time. And uh, my friend, Taylor, can you just share with us today, just in Daniel 6, just a little bit more of that story and what was going on? Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, like you mentioned, if you haven't already, please turn in your Bibles to Daniel 6. But, but like Celine mentioned, Daniel had been living in the land for, for a long time now. Most people think that he was probably, as, as we look at this story of him in the lions, then probably about 80 years old at the time. So he had been living in, ex, in exile for his entire adult life, at least 60 years. And um, he's, on, he's on his third king now. At the end of chapter 5, we see King Darius first come into the kingdom. And, and as any good... Uh, king of a giant pagan empire does, he has to establish himself, right? He has to, he has to set up structures and, and systems that will allow him to govern his new kingdom well. And so what he does, what we see in the beginning of, of chapter six, is he establishes 120 satraps, is how it's, it's put in the SV. Other translations use the word princes, but, but really they're just kind of like local governors over different areas that are going to uh, help manage the affairs of the kingdom for him. And then over those 120 satraps, he has three high officials. And Daniel is one of these three high officials. Um, but as we talked about, Daniel is an awesome guy and he's, uh, he's super loved by Darius. And so Darius wants to put him kind of over the entire kingdom, sort of a, a second in command. And uh, as the other officials catch wind of this and, and, and hear about it, they're not pleased. This is their power being taken from them, right? They're getting shuffled down the totem pole. And so they, they want to come up with an idea to get him in trouble, but, but he's, his, like we talked about, he lives with such integrity that, that they can't get him on anything that is a law. But what they knew about Daniel, what they saw in the way that he lived his life is that he was faithful to his God. And that if they could come up with a law that would interfere with the worship of his God, that they could get him on that because they knew that he wouldn't stray from that. And so they come up with this law and they, they write it up and it, it says that if anyone makes a petition or prayer to any other God or man other than the king for the next 30 years that they're thrown into the, the den of lions and they, they present it to, to King Darius and all he has to do is sign it and he loves it, right? Because he's a pagan king. And what do pagan <laughs> kings love? Being thought of as gods. And so, so he, he just goes ahead, signs this uh, law into action. That's where we pick up in verse 10, uh, if you'll read with me. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. There's a couple things that I kind of want to pick out of that, that one verse. And the first one is that Daniel doesn't try to hide it. It says that he goes into the, the, his upper chamber where he had windows open towards Jerusalem. See, Daniel's name in, in Hebrew literally means God is my judge. And Daniel knew who he was and he knew where he stood before God. He knew that, that no one on earth had the authority over him that his God had. And he takes an opportunity here to honor that God publicly not to, to shy away from it, not to, to retreat into the privacy of, of his own, but to, but to do it uh, publicly and to publicly prefer his God to life itself. And I think he's able to do this because the other thing that we see in this passage, Daniel has a lifestyle of prayer. He doesn't go and pray to his God as a desperation move. He doesn't go and pray to his God because he was afraid of what was going on and, and he needed some sort of solution real quick. It says that he prayed three times a day, as was his custom. This was something that he had done, right? And, and we know 
from, from Jesus that, that a lifestyle of prayer pulls something out. It, it makes us like Jesus. It gives us the heart of God, right? In John 15, five, Jesus says this. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Spending time in the presence of God through prayer had made Daniel like Jesus. Continuing on with our story, the, uh, those officials, after Daniel had done this, they, uh, they go to Darius and they remind him of this law. And, and of course, he's, he's super proud of it. And they say, well, Daniel doesn't pay any attention to you. Daniel continues to pray to his God. And you know what that means, Darius. He's got to go in the, the lion's den. At this point, Darius gets super salty. He's <laughs> upset with himself. He's upset with the officials. But, but the fact is that the law in Babylon couldn't be altered at this point. And so while he racks his brain for a loophole, he can't find one. And eventually that evening, he has to throw Daniel into the lion's den. And he says this in verse 16, he says, may your God whom you serve continually deliver you. Just like the other officials saw Daniel and they knew his uh, character and they knew his integrity and they knew who he worshiped, so did Darius. Darius saw this in, in Daniel's life because Daniel's walk with God was constant. It was all encompassing and it was clearly visible to everyone around him. Darius that night goes home and he fasts and he, he doesn't get much sleep. He has an all around terrible night. And the first thing he does, first thing in the morning is, is he runs to the lion's den after the night had passed. And it says that he cried out to Daniel in a tone of anguish. He cries out and we see Daniel's response here in verse 21. It's the first time that we see Daniel speak in this, in this particular story. And he says, it says, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Daniel speaking for the first time in the story, what, what I feel like challenges me about this is that Daniel approaches this king who had elevated himself to the place of God. And Daniel responds to this king who had just thrown him to the lions. And what he says is, O king, live forever. He greets this king who had just persecuted him with the honor due his position. He treats this king who had just persecuted him and thrown him to certain death with love. Just to illustrate how, how he's taking on this heart of Jesus, in Matthew 5, Jesus says this, he says, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I would call being thrown to death persecution, wouldn't you? Daniel at this point is taken out of the lion's den and Darius calls for the other officials and their children and their wives and, and they're thrown in. And it, it says that the lions had devoured them before they even reached the bottom. And then the next thing we see Darius do is, is he makes a decree that everyone in the kingdom should revere the God of Daniel because Daniel's God is the living God whose kingdom lasts forever. What I love about this and, and, and Daniel is is such an interesting book, the way it's constructed, is this is a theme that keeps coming up through the first six chapters. Whether it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, or some of the other stories uh, around Daniel in the, the earlier chapters, we see this idea that, that if you live out integrity with boldness and with gentleness like they do, God gets honored. Again, the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. Darius was shown the supremacy and the character of God through Daniel's life, faith, and integrity. Celine, you had uh, shared something with me earlier about, about how when we engage with God's word that, that often uh, we can be challenged we can be encouraged. We can find God's love through the pages of his word. How for us does that play out? Then? Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, when I was thinking about having an uh, analogy today, I was thinking about, you know, digging a hole and going out into the mountains and finding mountain lions. 
and throwing them in the hole and seeing who here was living a life of integrity and would want to test their faith. Um, but then I realized that's a lot of work. And so I wasn't going to do that. Um, but you know what? It's so cool. Uh, everything that Taylor was sharing about Daniel and the life that he was living, the life that he was living with integrity, you know, man, that challenged me in the season that I'm in right now. You know, it's, we talk about, uh, persecution a lot lately in our culture. We're talking about this governor's doing this and this person's doing that. And we're talking about we're being persecuted as a church. But when I read this and I see Daniel, I realize real quick, man, that's persecution. What he is going through is persecution. And I'm not trying to say that to take away our feelings right now as a church and what's going on, because there are some things that we need to stand up for and say. But I also do believe that, man, when we see something like this, it really puts a perspective, it puts a lens on our eyes of what was going on in that time and what true persecution is. You know, and, and my challenge for us today is, and this is a challenge that uh, that the Lord said to me right away, uh, living a life of integrity. It was kind of uh, kind of this, and it was like, Celine, you know, every you, wearing a mask to church right now is kind of like the thing to do. But have you been wearing a mask to church a lot longer than COVID's been around? And I would challenge that for you guys. Have you been just coming to church because it's the thing to do on a Sunday? And it's just like, yeah, that's what I do. I just come to church. My challenge, how are you living your everyday life? How are you living your life daily? As we see in Daniel, man, you know, it's funny. He says that he, uh, he prayed three times a day. I think if I was living in that time in Babylon and being persecuted that way, I would be praying three times a day. You know, I would be praying. And uh, we see that in Daniel, that he is praying and that he is saying, Lord, uh, he's spending time with him. And I would challenge this, man, we are all going through stuff in life. You know, Daniel is life is a storm. He is going through a ton of things. Um, and we are all going through stuff in life. But what God, when we have that relationship with the Lord, when we have that, it motivates us to want to live a certain life. And my challenge for us tonight is, man, are we living a life that gives honor to the Lord every day? Just like Daniel did. You know, and my encouragement to us is, you know, we see that Daniel at the end of the story was saved. Um, and that it says in, in, in the word that uh, angels held the mouse of the lions. And we see that he got saved from that. And one thing that I, I, I took away from, from this was Daniel, uh, even though he walked uh, in Psalm 24, uh, 23 verse four, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow and death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, when you have daily relationship with God and you are living it out, God can do some amazing things in your life. You can see amazing change happen in your life. You know, we see Daniel uh, come out of the lion's den, and then all of a sudden you see Darius start praising and saying, man, Daniel's God is real. Daniel's God is doing things. And I want to encourage all of us, when we live that life, when we live a life of integrity, God can do some amazing things. God can change your family. God can change your, your uh, workplace. He can change the things in your community. And that's what we're all about here at the bridge. It's about our community. Man, I'm telling you, if we want to see RSM, Rancho San Margarita change, all we, the, 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 the most simple thing that we can do is just live a life after Jesus and live that life of integrity. And people are going to see that and they're going to say, I want that. I want to have that. Just as what Katie was sharing earlier today about her grandfather and saying that, man, like the way that her grandfather did business and the way that he kept his word inspired me to always live that way. And she was like, I want that. People are going to say that about you the way that you live your life. But I want that. What is that? And then you have an opportunity to be able to share the gospel. It's because of Jesus. It's because of the relationship I have with God in my everyday life. You know, uh, also in this story, um, and, and Taylor mentioned this, uh, we see also what happens when you don't live a life with integrity and you don't live a life uh, honoring the Lord. You know, these other people that were trying to get Daniel in trouble, um, it says really quickly that they got thrown into the lion's den, but not just them. 
their wives and their children. And I read that and I realized real quick, man, the way I live my life doesn't just affect me, it affects my family. It affects my wife, it affects my kids. I could be doing something that they couldn't have nothing to do with, but it can affect them. And the thing that, I, the other challenge I put out there, man, we wanna live lives that can pour out blessing to our wives, to our husbands, to our children, to our grandchildren. How many guys wanna live a life like that? That, that? that your legacy leaves blessing, not death. And we see that, uh, we see an example of that, that these other guys, when they were living, man, the way they lived brought death. But the way that Daniel lived brought life and brought, and, and, and was able to just show, show the love of Jesus and Jesus was proclaimed in that. And so tonight, I, I pray that as we uh, interact and hang out with each other, I pray that uh, tonight you feel loved on. You know, uh, the cool thing about this too is that Daniel very just continues, even after this, continues to live a life of integrity. And because he knows that God is with him. And I hope that you walk away tonight that God is with you. God is for you. Uh, God loves you. You know, I love that when Taylor was speaking, he brought in the, how Daniel's life reflected the life of Jesus, you know, and I think, and, and, and he spent time with him, that he spent time with the Lord. And I pray that tonight that you would just uh, want to go home and just want to get into your word and, and get on your knees and pray and just want to have more of a life that just looks after the Lord, that will look like the way that Jesus lived. Um, I do have a reflection question for us to kind of take away. And the question is, does your everyday life reflect that you have an everyday relationship with God. And I'll say that one more time. Does your everyday life reflect that you have an everyday relationship, uh, a time of the Lord with God? And so that, that's the question that I have that you can take home, that you can reflect on uh, this week. Uh, but church, I'm so excited that uh, you were here tonight. Um, man, we uh, are finishing up a series called God Can with the Next Gen Department, and it's been awesome. And uh, I just want to encourage you, man, God can do amazing things in your life. Uh, when you walk with him, when you spend time with him, he's going to do amazing things in your life. And uh, I just pray that that happens. And so I'm going to pray, Lord, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for everyone here, Lord. Lord, you are awesome and you are good. And Lord, we know that you want to do awesome and mighty things in our family, in our, in our workplace, and in our community. Lord, you can do so many things, Lord. And so, Lord, I just pray everyone here tonight, Lord, as we've been challenged uh, and hopefully we've been encouraged and we felt love, that we would take uh, today's lesson and, and live it out, uh, just a life of integrity, a life after you in your name. And we love you in your name. Amen. Amen.